Good morning. Today we are going to walk through my solutions to the second electricity and magnetism free response question of the AP Physics C 1998 released exam. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board, which was not involved in the production of and does not endorse this product. Here we go. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Uh, hi Bob. Flippin' Physics. We have a circuit diagram with a battery with an EMF of 20 volts, a resistor 1 with a resistance of 10 ohms, resistor 2 20 ohms, a capacitor with a capacitance of 15 microfarads, and an inductor with an inductance of 2.0 henrys. There is a switch which is currently open but could be closed to A or to B. For part A, uh, it asks us to draw the voltmeter, voltmeter with the proper connections for correctly measuring the potential difference across resistor 1. There you go. As long as the voltmeter is in parallel with resistor 1 and only resistor 1, then it's correct. In other words, the voltmeter could go above or below, doesn't matter, as long as one side is between resistor 1 and the battery, and the other side connects between resistor 1 and the switch. Part B. At time t equals 0, we close the switch to position A, and the question is what is the potential difference across resistor 1 immediately after time t equals 0, so right after we close the switch. Initially, right when we close the switch, this capacitor has zero charge and therefore zero electric potential difference across the capacitor. Therefore, essentially, this capacitor acts like it's not even there and we have current going through this circuit. Now, as time goes by, charge is going to build on the capacitor and there's going to be an electric potential difference across the capacitor, which is, means that the current is going to decrease. But right at that very beginning, we're going to have the maximum current and the equivalent resistance is just going to be the resistor 1 and resistor 2 are in series, and we can use that to figure out the equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance for two resistors in series is that they just add, therefore the equivalent resistance is going to be resistance 1 plus resistance 2. So the equivalent resistance is just 10 plus 20 or 30 ohms. Electric potential difference equals current times resistance, so the current is equal to the electric potential difference divided by the resistance. If we talk about the total current, then that's going to be the electric potential difference across the battery or the terminal voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. Or 20 volts over 30 ohms, which works out to be two-thirds of an amp. So this is the current delivered by the battery. Now this is the maximum current and it's going to decrease as a function of time. But this is also the current that goes through resistor 1. So we can use that to figure out the electric potential difference across resistor 1. Because the electric potential difference across resistor 1 is going to be equal to the current through resistor 1 times the resistance of resistor 1, or 2 thirds times 10, or 6.6 .6 repeating, which works out to be 6.7 volts. The answer to part B. Part C. After a long time, okay, pause there. After a long time, understand, means as long as we need it to be, infinitely long. So we're taking the potential difference across resistor one, we wanna know the voltmeter reading. Okay, so after a long time, the potential difference across the capacitor is going to be at its maximum value, which means it's going to be equal to the potential difference across the battery. Because the capacitor is fully charged, there will be no current flowing through the circuit. If there's no current, there's no electric potential difference. The electric potential difference across resistor 1 is equal to 0. Part C, double I, or C2, uh, the charge on the capacitor again after a very long time. Well, we know the electric potential difference across the capacitor is equal to 20 volts. And we know the equation definition for capacitance. Capacitance equals the charge over the electric potential difference. So we can solve this equation for the charge. In other words, the charge on the capacitor is going to be equal to the capacitance of the capacitor multiplied by the electric potential difference across the capacitor. In other words, the charge on the capacitor is going to be equal to 15 times 10 to the negative 6 farads times 20 volts, or 3.00 times 10 to the negative 4 coulombs.
Part D, at time t is equal to big T, we move the switch to position B. And the question is, what is the potential difference across resistor one right when we flip the switch to B? Okay, remember the capacitor is fully charged and we've just basically disengaged it from the circuit. So the charge is gonna stay on the capacitor because it doesn't have anywhere to go. It needs a closed loop in order to discharge the capacitor. Now, the inductor is a, inductors resist a change in the current. And the initial current through the resistor one, right when we flip the switch to B, is equal to zero, and it's not going to change because this inductor resists a change in current. Therefore, the current through resistor one is going to stay right at that very beginning equal to zero, and it's going to increase from there. But right when we flip the switch to B, that current through resistor one is going to be equal to zero. Therefore, the electric potential difference across resistor one is also going to be equal to zero. Part EI, or E1. Again, a long time after T is equal to capital T, the question is, what is the current through resistor one essentially final after a very long time? All right, so now, after a long time, the inductor is done resisting a change in current. The current has changed as much as it can. So di dt is equal to zero in the inductor. Again, the current in the inductor is not changing, so di dt is equal to zero. So the EMF across the inductor is negative LDI dt. The EMF across an inductor is equal to the negative of the inductance times the derivative of the current with respect to time. And the current is not changing with respect to time, again, after a very long time. Therefore, di dt is equal to zero. Therefore, the EMF, a, the potential difference across the inductor is equal to zero. Mr. P? Uh, yes, Bobby? Doesn't this make this exactly the same as part B? Exactly correct, Bobby. Uh, when we go look back at part B, we close the switch to A, the electric potential difference across the capacitor was equal to zero. Well, the same thing is true here. We, we have the electric potential difference across the inductor is equal to zero. Therefore, it turns out that all these equations are the same, and uh, the current through resistor one is two-thirds of an amp or 0.67 amps, the answer to part EI or E1. Part E double I or E2, what is the energy stored in the inductor a very long time after we close the switch to position B? We just need the equation for the energy stored in an inductor. The energy stored in an inductor is one half times the inductance times the current through the inductor squared. or one half times two times two thirds squared, or 0 0.4 repeating, or 0 0.444 joules. Part F, write but do not solve. Stop there for a moment. Write but do not solve means literally write it down, but do not solve it. They're interested to know that you understand the physics, but they're not, they don't need to see you do the math. So literally write down the equation, but stop, don't solve it. So we're looking for a differential equation for the current in resistor one as a function of time after we move the switch to B. So how does that current change as a function of time after we flip the switch to B? We're gonna start out with a Kirchhoff's rules loop. The Kirchhoff's rules loop we're gonna draw is going to be all the way around the outside of the circuit. Remember the potential differences around a loop add up to zero. So we start with the potential difference across the battery, that's the EMF, minus the electric potential difference across resistor one, minus the electric potential difference across the inductor, minus the electric potential difference across resistor two. The potential goes down as we go across all of these, both resistors and the inductor. Now we plug in the equations for the potential differences. The potential difference across a resistor is current times resistance, so we have current one times resistance one and current two times resistance two. And the electric potential difference across an inductor is the inductance times the derivative of the current with respect to time. And we know this about the currents, that all the currents are the same, the current through resistor one, current through resistor two, and the total current delivered by the battery. So we can now rearrange the equation slightly. 
we get the EMF of the battery minus the total current delivered by the battery times resistance one plus resistance two minus the inductance times the IDT, the derivative of the current with respect to time. That whole thing is equal to zero. And this is a differential equation which we could solve for to find the current in resistor one. We're not going to solve it because they didn't ask us to, so we don't want to take our time to do that. That would be a waste of time on the test. Those are my solutions to free response question number two. If you'd like to see free response question number three solutions, hopefully they're right here. You can click on it um, and ho hopefully I'll get it to see you there soon.